and welcome to the stage, Lewis Gardam! Guys, how's everyone? Good? You seem pumped, you seem happy. I, um, I want to talk about hipsters real quick. I've, I've got like a... I'm really angry at the hipster community at the moment. I don't have like a vendetta against them. It's just that like something personal happened. Last week, I got food poisoning from a hipster cafe. <laughs> And that's bullshit, because you go to a hipster cafe, you don't expect food poisoning. You expect to be a little bit annoyed at the pretentiousness of the place, but you don't expect food poisoning. Because <laughs> hipsters know what they're doing with food. The thing that really annoyed me about it is that at this place and at most of these sort of joints, the menu was so verbose. They described every element of the dish in meticulous detail, but in all that writing, they couldn't find space to slip in a little disclaimer that you might get food poisoning from eating the meal. <laughs> Just chuck it in there amongst all the other shit and it'd make everyone's life easier. Be so easy to put it in there. Like a beautiful, soft bed of caramelised Spanish onions, sautéed organic mushrooms, Himalayan goat's cheese, which has been personally sourced and brought to the cafe by a Nepalese Sherpa called Ben, who's not actually Nepalese, he's a white guy from Abbotsford, but he's been living in Nepal for the last three years and he's decided that he identifies as a Nepalese person. Leafy green baby cos lettuce and an undercooked grain-fed beef patty, which will make you violently shit water for three days straight on a lightly toasted brioche bun. And then I'd know, then I'd be aware. It'd just be so much easier. Because you don't expect to get food poisoning from a hipster cafe. If I'd gotten food poisoning from a truck stop in between here and Adelaide, I wouldn't have a right to be annoyed. Because you go to a truck stop in between here and Adelaide, you know that you might get a bit of food poisoning. Like getting annoyed at getting food poisoning from a truck stop in between here and Adelaide is like sending your kids to a Catholic school and getting annoyed when they get molested. Like what did you, or, or like going to a comedy show and getting annoyed when a random comedian who you've never heard of makes a joke that's somewhat pedestrian and has frankly been covered by many comedians before him. That's a little bit what it's like. like what the fuck did you expect? Like, um, I've got a dog, are there any dog owners in? One fucking dog owner. I be don't believe that at all. That's bullshit. Why aren't you more enthusiastic? You should be proud. Usually dog owners are like, oh, I've got a dog. I love my dog. You know, they're really passionate. I am anyway. I'm passionate about having a dog. I love having a dog. It's the best thing in the world. My favourite thing in the world is walking my dog to the park. That's my absolute favourite thing to do in the world. As long as I don't have to speak to any other humans when I do it. <laughs> Because I reckon that nothing illustrates the awkwardness that human consciousness has created better than the difference between dog-to-dog -dog interaction and human-to-human -human interaction. Because the dogs, they connect straight away. You're a dog, I'm a dog, let's fucking wrestle. <laughs> While the humans simultaneously think to themselves, Fuck, now I'm going to have to talk to this dickhead. <laughs> Your dogs are wrestling, so you walk over and you have the dog conversation. And no one enjoys the dog conversation because it's the exact same every time you have it. You start off by asking each other how old your dogs are. And people are really specific about that. Four years and seven months, which I think is strange because like, what's the difference between a four-year-old dog and an eight-year-old dog? Like, dogs only have three ages. Puppy, not a puppy, gonna die soon probably. Like, that's all there is. No point specifying it any more than that. Then you move on. You ask each other what breed of dogs you have. That's always interesting. At this point, people will often tell you that their dog's a rescue dog. They'll just chuck that in there. Good on you, mate. Like, I've given to charity before. Like, why are you telling me that? It's irrelevant. And then you move on to the comment phase of the conversation. So one of you makes a comment about how cute and funny the dogs look while they're wrestling, how well they're getting along, something like that. And the other one follows that up with a comment about how tired all the wrestling's going to make them, but how that's a good thing because it means they'll be less mischievous when they get home. And that signifies the end of the dog conversation. You've made it to the end. But your dogs are still wrestling. You're still standing a metre away from this person who you don't know at all. You've discussed the dogs. You've got nothing left to talk about. I just hate that awkward tension. I hate standing there. I hate, I don't know what to do. There's sort of like two established options in society for how you can escape that moment. Option one, you make a random comment about how you've got to put dinner on even though it's two in the afternoon. <laughs> Grab your dog. Fuck off. Option two is a bit more abstract. Option two, you like stare at the dogs and pretend that you're so entertained by the way that they're wrestling that you don't need to talk anymore. Like, 
that sometimes works. But I wish there was a third option. I want there to be an option three. So next one guy that has a dog, next time you're walking your dog, next time you have the dog conversation, incorporate option three. Option three at the end of the dog conversation is to talk about something in your personal life that really matters to you that has nothing to do with the dogs. <laughs> That could revolutionise the way we walk our dogs. Imagine that. They walk over each other. Hey, mate, how you going? Yeah, good. How old's your dog? Six years. Oh, nice. How old's yours? Three years and four months. Ah, oh, it's pretty specific. What is it? Does it have a bit of German Shepherd in it? Or is it, uh, is it German? Sh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a German Shepherd cross Kelpie. So good mix. Lots of energy. What about you? Is that just a straight retriever? Just like a, yeah, just golden retriever. Plain and boring. Rescue dog, though. Great dog. Tell you what. They get along well, don't they? How cute and funny do they look the way they're wrestling like that? Absolutely, mate. They're having a great time. And you know what? This is good for us as well, because the more she does of this here, the less she'll be ripping up my garden when we get home. <laughs> You're not wrong, mate. You're not wrong. I just found out my girlfriend's been having sex with one of my uni lecturers. <laughs> that sucks, man. Um, I don't know what to say. I've got to put dinner on, so I'm going to leave you to it. But thanks, guys. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lewis Garnham.